Okay, everything looks good except for a slight decrease in tidal volume. So if you were to look here... Ah, uh, yes, the upper alveolar uh, vestibule of the sartorius. Look, all of this is most likely due to your smoking. And given the quality of your answer, I'm going to safely assume that you've been smoking cannabis. Well, yeah, I have to inhale it, you know. Breathe deep, hold it in as long as possible so I get the most bang for my buck. Right? That's right. Look, I can't speak to that. If only someone could tell us if that notion is valid. Oh, it's highly dubious. We're back, everybody! Hello, everyone, and welcome, or welcome back, to another episode of Highly Dubious. And today we are going to discuss the great and persistent problems around inhaling cannabis. Problems like looking cool, smelling cool, being totally badass. And when you breathe, what's the ideal time to hold your breath, if there is one? How do you inhale safely and how do you maximize the effects? What does science have to say about the matter? Well, I called him up and he was confused and angry. But after I said I'd show up at his home, he stopped crying and gave me a straight answer. We will discuss facts as it relates to holding your breath and show that many of the myths around it are highly dubious. First, holding your breath when inhaling cannabis is a common myth and it's not necessary to experience greater effects of the drug. The Journal of Pharmacology, Biochemistry and Behavior looked at breath hold duration and the response to marijuana smoke in the study of the same name. Dr. Zachney and Kate had their subjects hold their breath for no seconds, 10 seconds and 20 seconds on three occasions scheduled according to a randomized block design while keeping the number of puffs, puff volume, and post-puff inhalation volume constant. Here they found that holding your breath does not significantly enhance the effects of cannabis smoke. Now they had a few critics with this finding as it went against the grain of conventional cannabis knowledge. So Zachney and Kate's response was, I'll f***ing do it again, respectfully. Zachney and Kate actually repeated this study a few years later, where they also looked at the effects of breath hold on carbon monoxide and against the placebo. Sweet placebo, my favorite strain. And there was no difference. The practice of holding your breath when inhaling cannabis likely originated from the belief that it'll cause a more intense and longer duration of your high. However, there is no scientific claims to back up this myth. Dubious. Second, holding your breath when inhaling cannabis can actually be detrimental to your health. There is a lot of people who say that when you smoke as opposed to vaping, you feel the effects more especially when you hold it, but especially if you cough after. Maybe they're right. Or maybe it's the temporary decrease in oxygen to the brain if you're coughing, <coughs> hacking, not to mention falling, hitting your head on the coffee table and glass coffee tables and ruining the baby shower again. Short-term problems of coughing aside, let's get back to holding your breath. Breath hold isn't great as it relates to long-term problems either. Not only does holding your breath increase the absorption of problematic particles through your lungs, it can lead to respiratory problems and other issues over time. There was a study recently and prominently featured in the Edmonton Journal done with the University of Ottawa and Ottawa Hospital. Here they shared the results of a long investigation. So long it was actually 15 years in the making. It is 15 years old, so this is probably a little bit more like it. Bussin. This study explored the effects of cannabis smoke on lungs and found that pot smokers have higher rates of airway issues compared to tobacco smokers. And to keep this video short, let's quickly run down the problems that they even acknowledge in the study. 
The researcher wasn't able to establish an association between cannabis smoking and any disease. The small sample size limited them from drawing strong conclusions. Using a limited retrospective study, their inability to qualify cannabis use because it was illegal 15 years ago, and they made the subjects self-reported. Not to mention, most marijuana smokers also smoke tobacco, and they didn't look at the synergistic effects. On top of this, only a few of the patients could even be age-matched. So, was the pot smoking outcomes due to cannabis or THC? The saucer people? The RAND Corporation? No, it was from breath holding. A November 15th, 2022 publication from the Radiological Society of North America found that higher incidence of damage with cannabis smoke might be from the way it smoked. Full inhalation and a sustained Valsalva maneuver. Valsalva isn't just a great name for a delicious craft salsa. It's when you exhale against a closed airway. <laughs> and this may lead to airway damage. So let's summarize. More absorption, dubious. Your breath hold, dubious. Your jewelry, dubious. Your foot stance, dubious. The way that he talks, dubious. The way that he doesn't even smile, dubious. Me, I'm tight as <laughs> So let's not just dwell on the negative. What is the most effective and safe way to inhale? It appears the most effective way is to breathe deeply once and then exhale naturally without holding your breath at all. This allows the maximum amount of THC to enter your bloodstream with the minimum amount of anything that could harm you. The Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics found that yes, puff volume does play a role, but the returns are diminishing. A deep inhale has benefits, but the largest possible inhalation is not going to give you a proportionate impact. So that deep breath with the long breath hold is not worth it. Breathe deep, nothing abnormal, and then exhale naturally. Waiting to exhale is not ideal, or even good, or watchable, no matter what my wife says. So you see, holding your breath is a myth. A myth that needs to stop. Not only is it not great for you, but it doesn't have a significant upside either. So the next time someone tells you to hold off on pushing out your puff, let them know that the evidence is highly dubious. Well, don't say, don't say it like that. You'll sound, you'll sound weird. Thank you everyone for watching. Feel free to subscribe or share your thoughts below. And feel free to pass this video to anyone who you think may get a buzz off of. Check out our host of other videos below, including more Highly Dubious. And until the next one, I will see you soon.